Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video. We have some news today. They announced two new ships on the 10 Forward weekly stream last night. The new winter event ship and also a new lockbox ship which is going straight into the Infinity lockbox, the Saturn class. I wish they had put out the stats for the winter event ship first. Now we actually know what they are because they show it on the, on the, um, the stream and people have screen captured it and stuff but I like to wait for the blogs. But uh, this is the only stat blog we have for now, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. And uh, it is a 32nd century Discovery ship, and it it's basically just a giant ring with a hole in the middle. And I think it's pretty cool looking, just personally speaking. Uh, it is very expensive being a lockbox ship, though. I wish they had put it into a new lockbox. We haven't gotten an actual proper lockbox in a while, and... Um, Obviously, lockboxes are gambling. They're not great. But I do like the extra consoles and traits and personal space traits and all that stuff that we normally get with a regular lockbox. But they've been sticking a lot of these uh, new lockbox ships straight into the Infinity box. So, you know, it is, what, it is what it is. If you happen to have an Infinity choice box, though, then you'll just be able to snag it up right away and you won't have to open a new kind of box. So there's pros and cons there. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any of the floaty bits that the other... 32nd century ships have so if you're not a fan of that you might like this a little bit more it is a science spearhead which they describe as being um, a more tactically focused science vessel but not quite to the point of being a science destroyer and uh, people have come up with all kinds of names for it already there's a, the Xena's chakra you remember Xena princess warrior uh, people said it looks like a potty training seat and all kinds of other silly stuff uh, but it's going to be coming out on December 7th on PC and console and the other part of this blog is that the United Earth Defense Force vessel is going to be coming to console as well. And if you um, haven't seen anything about that, I actually already have a, a full review of the ship up on my channel for that ship. So if you're a console player and you haven't seen that already, you could check that out. So I'm not going to look at the details for that ship because it's already old news. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this Intel Science Spearhead. It's a Tier 6 ship. It has a hull modifier 1.35, shield modifier 1.25. Those are relatively high, but that's what you would expect for a premium ship. It, as a um, spearhead, it has seven weapon slots instead of six, so it has a 4-3 weapon layout, which is, uh, which is nice, I think. Bridge officer stations, it has a lieutenant commander tactical, a lieutenant engineering, a commander science slash intel, because it's a full intel ship, an ensign universal pilot, and a lieutenant commander universal. What does this mean? Well, for science ships, you typically want as little tactical and engineering seating as possible, although if you're going to do Cytorp, a lieutenant commander science isn't that bad. Um, so I would probably do Cytorp on this. You could put uh, Torp Spread 3, then Faw, and see a, you know, Cannon Scatter Volley to get Entwined Tactical Matrix Cs and just vomit torpedoes all day uh, with, you know, EPG torpedoes. And uh, the pilot seating is a bit interesting that it's only an ensign, but if you do uh, Synthetic Good Fortune and you have Fresh from R&R &R and you do Pilot Team, you can trigger that once every 10 seconds. So it'd be a pretty decent way to build up stacks of that trait, which gives you control, uh, expertise, and crit chance. So that's pretty nice. As far as I know, the trait still hasn't been fixed, so you can get all the benefits without even having it slotted onto your trait, your ship. Uh, it has four tactical, two engineering, five science. Again, going back to the idea that spearheads are more tactically focused. And there are a million planes today. I really do apologize for the audio quality. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look down here. We get 10 to weapons, 10 to auxiliary. Turn rate of 9, which is not great, but it is supposed to be a pretty large ship. It has a inertia of 50, so it should stop pretty well. The Universal Console uh, Chakram Projector looks really neat. Um, if there's anything on this ship that I would be looking forward to or possibly buying it for, it would probably be the console. It creates this uh, pet that follows you around for 45 seconds, going to nearest target, supposedly, and doing some kinetic damage and kinetic damage debuff. Although we did have, I can't remember what ship it came on, but we had a thing, a ship that made a big bubble um that, that did the same thing and um that ended up not really going anywhere as far as i know so you know maybe a big area of effect kinetic debuff isn't necessarily going to be you know that big of a deal 
uh, but it does make a giant ring like the ring of Saturn supposedly so here's a picture of it um, pretty pretty cool looking then it has a new uh, trait called automated triage which if I'm reading it right looks absolutely awful for one critical reason it says while this trait is slotted if you are an ally within five kilometers or below 50 percent hole immediately restore 10 percent of their maximum hole and then an additional 20 percent over 10 seconds this effect may not be triggered more than once every 60 seconds but science team or intel abilities will reduce it by 10 seconds per activation here's the trouble allies if if you you have self and player that just includes you then you've got friend or teammate and that basically includes other real players but as soon as you go to ally that includes everything that includes hangar pets that includes you know deployable satellites all that stuff counts as an ally and sometimes that's great because if you just have a big buff where it says buffs all allies that's great you get to buff the hangar pets as well as your teammates but if it's a once per 60 seconds once per 30 seconds whatever heal automatic heal that you can't target it's going to start popping off on people's hanger pets that's not what you want you don't want it activate triggering on your hanger pet so i think for that reason it's not going to be very good at all um, and then we have the united earth defense force i already said i wasn't going to cover that because we've already talked about that i have a whole video about that so um, that's basically it uh, it doesn't have temp op seating that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad you can you can get um some spore infused anomaly procs on here you can get anomalies you can do uh unconventional system stuff and spam epg consoles and all that so it's going to be a decent science ship no doubt it does have seven weapons and all that sort of stuff so it's not going to be a terrible ship by any stretch of the imagination but i really doubt this is going to be have a big impact the console maybe but it seems a bit unlikely the trait is probably absolutely terrible because it uh, can trigger on allies as well as just teammates and yeah so that's about it um i am um, and yeah we'll uh, stay tuned for the stats blog on the winter event ship the eisenberg and uh, i'll see you in the next one take care of yourselves bye for now